As we mentioned earlier, just under 20,000 National Grid customers in Rhode Island are still without power three days after the storm. But as you can see on your screen right here, the only part of Rhode Island still dealing with significant outages is Washington County. So we wanted to know how National Grid decides which outages to repair first. Our in-depth coverage of Sandy's impact continues now with Eyewitness News reporter Nicole Estefan, who's live with the Mobile Newsroom. Well, it's right. Have you ever wondered why some people are powered up first? In some cases, your neighbor has electricity and you don't. Well, we learned today priority is given to places like hospitals. Then it's the substations that restore on a grid like thing, a grid like system. And then finally it's to areas hardest hit. If you take a drive around the state, no doubt you will chance upon a national grid truck somewhere. Hundreds of crews working to restore power. The system is designed as a grid with sections in it. We wanted to know why some areas are back online earlier than others. National Grid spokesman David Graves tells us they work on substations first. They restore the largest areas at once. Nine went out in Sandy. Then they dedicate resources to the area's hardest hit. Damage in South County, the tree damage in South County was extremely extensive. So we've got to get all of that vegetation out of the way. Though some are still in the dark, National Grid tells us it's learned from past mistakes. After Irene, we took a look at every element of our emergency preparedness plan. Everything was analyzed. Nothing was left to chance. Everything was open to discussion, revamping, and in some, in some cases, a complete redesign. Again, National Grid does anticipate that most of the state will be back up and running by the end of the weekend. We're live at the Mobile Newsroom. Nicole Estefan, Eyewitness News.